Welcome to the ministry of Barefoot Church. I'm Clay Neesmith, the pastor here at Barefoot Church. And man, we hope what you experience here today uh, will encourage you, motivate you, and inspire you in a great, great way. If you have your Bibles with you today, I'm going to invite you to turn it to a couple of passages. We're going to begin with Mark chapter 11 with a conversation that Jesus had with a few people. And then we're going to be walking through a psalm in our Bible, Psalm 51. And so if you want to go ahead and mark Psalm 51, we're going to, again, go to Mark Mark 11. We're going to take off today from there, and we're going to learn some things about having honest conversations with God. And if you want a little background on Mark chapter 11, this is where Jesus is having a conversation with some people who were looking to destroy him, more or less take him down, take uh, what he was doing down, take his teaching down, uh, begin to do away with him because they didn't like what he was saying and they didn't believe in what he was saying. And so they come to Jesus and they ask him a question. And then Jesus answers them by asking them a question and then he begins to tell them why he doesn't want to answer their question. And so, again, that's the backdrop to Mark 11. So let's look and see what it says. The Bible says this. We'll begin with verse 27. It says, again, they entered Jerusalem, Jesus and his friends. As they were walking through the temple area, the leading priest and the teachers of the religious law and the elders came up to him, being Jesus. They demanded... By what authority are you doing all these things? Who gave you the right to do them? I tell you by what authority I do these things. If you will answer one question, Jesus replied, did John's authority to baptize when he was baptizing in the Jordan River, did it come from heaven or was it merely human? And Jesus says, answer me. They talked it over among themselves. They became very diplomatic. If we say it was from heaven, he will ask why we didn't believe John. But do we dare say it was merely human? Because if we do that, they were afraid of what the people would do because everyone believed that John was really a prophet. So they finally replied to Jesus, we're going to sit on the fence Let us circle back to you with this question. We don't know. Interesting. But then the Bible goes on to say this, and Jesus responded, then I won't tell you by what authority I do these things. Now that's an interesting response by Jesus to the people who were asking him a question. He turns around and he asks them, a question about John baptizing people in the Jordan River and because they chose not to answer him or chose to say, we don't know, Jesus says, well, then I'm not going to answer your question. Now, that can sort of seem a little hurtful. That can seem a little bit like I'm being a smart aleck. That that can seem sort of like, you know, um, I'm, I'm... you know, not for you. I, what, what do you mean asking me questions when I really need to be asking you questions? That, that can kind of at first glance be looking at what Jesus is saying, but what Jesus is doing here is actually remarkable. How many of you know God always wants to help you? He never wants to hurt you. Amen. God always wants to help you, but he never wants to hurt you. But what Jesus does here to these people is he says, basically, until you're willing to have an honest conversation with me, then I can't really help you. So if you're not willing to talk to me honestly about what you're thinking, Jesus could care less about what they were thinking or doing or what they were believing about him But what Jesus says is you're coming to me, 
You're asking me a question, and what you're not really doing is being honest with me in the conversation. And God is always about honesty. God is always about keeping it real. God doesn't really care where you've been, what you've done, how long you've done it. What God is asking you to do is come to him and get honest with him about who he is and where you are. There's another conversation that Jesus had with a man who had been sick for 38 years. It's found in your Bible in John chapter 5, verses Verses five and six. But basically, Jesus comes to this man who had been lame, laying by a pool of water for 38 years. And Jesus walks up to him and asks him this ridiculous question. He says, do you want to get well? Now, why would Jesus ask someone that kind of question? Because Jesus wanted to hear the man's response about the honesty of where he was. And Jesus wanted the man to understand who he was. And Jesus says, do you want to get well? See, Jesus is coming to some of us today and saying, do you really want to get well? And you're saying, yeah, I want to get well. But Jesus says, well, you need to get honest because when you get honest, we can begin to get well. You know, in the garden, when the first man and the woman stepped away from God's purpose and plan, the Bible says that they went and hid away from God or they tried to hide away from God. The Bible says they hid themselves behind some fig leaves and all of this sorts of stuff. And the Bible goes on to say something remarkable. The Bible says God comes walking through the garden and God asks them a question. He says, where are you? Now, again, God is omnipresent. In other words, he's everywhere at one time. And God was in relationship with them. And do you really think that God who created them, who blew breath into their lungs and brought them out of the dust, didn't know where they were? God understood right where they were. But he says, where are you? Because they had stepped away from God's purpose and plan. We call it sin, missing the mark of God's glorious standard. And then they hid. They began to hide out behind fig leaves and God says where are you because God wanted them to get honest about where they were and how they had missed so he could step into their life and do something see an honest conversation with God can change everything and I have to ask myself am I having an honest conversation with God am I getting real Uh, Not coming to church, not just playing my part, not just preaching a message, but but am I sitting down with God? Am I stepping into the great counselor's presence and getting honest with him about who he is and where I am? Do I really want to get well? Do I really want to have peace beyond human understanding? Do I really want to gain joy back in my life? Or do I want to continue down the path of living behind some sort of lie? See, the amazing thing today that we're going to learn from Psalm 51 is Psalm 51 is the outcry of a man named David who got honest with God. The backdrop to Psalm 51 is David, King David, the one who was king of all of Israel. He was a great leader, powerful leader, one of the greatest leaders ever known to humanity. And the Bible says he had led the people on great missions. He had done incredible things, and he had had built an incredible castle. He was a great warrior. He was a military leader. He was an incredible strategist. 
He led people with God's authority. He did things with honor. He did things with integrity. He did things in such a way that it was all incredible. However, in his calling, David one day got very, very lazy, let's call it. And the Bible says, instead of going out to battle with his men, he chose to stay stay back in his castle. And as he looks out his window, he sees, he sees his captains, the captain of his army. He sees, he sees his wife on a roof bathing naked. Her name is Bathsheba. The Bible says this in 2 Samuel 11 that basically David takes Bathsheba in. He sleeps with Bathsheba, another man's wife, his friend's wife, one of his great warrior's wife, and something happens. The Bible says she becomes pregnant. And can I tell you something? In David's moment of weakness, he misses the mark. He is pulled away from his calling. Bathsheba gets pregnant. And then as Bathsheba gets pregnant, David has a true problem on his hands. And the Bible says that basically, if you read the story, David begins to try to figure out what he's going to do. So he sends Bathsheba away. And eventually, he's like, man, I, I, I got to fix this. Come on, somebody. The Bible says, so what I'll do is I'll send, I'll send Uriah, her husband, out, out to battle again. And I'll put him on the front lines and, you know, the enemy will kill him. And then if the enemy kills him, then the problem will be gone. But before David does that, he's actually like, you know what, I'm going to send for Uriah and ask him to come home and hang out for a while. Come off the battlefield. Come back into the house. And then, then just maybe he'll think he, he, that, that he got her pregnant and I didn't get her pregnant. Surely nobody's going to do a, a, a test to see whose baby it is. Can I tell you something? All of that's dishonesty. It's It's all living behind a lie. It's it's all a place that, it's it's a place where all of us have been or currently are. We've all missed the mark of God's glorious standard. Then David begins to try to rationalize the lie away. He first tries to ignore it. I mean, I can just kind of get in his head for just a moment. And David's like, shoot, I'm the king. I'm the pastor of all pastors. I'm the man. And man, I've been fighting hard. Man, I've been doing battle. You know, you know how, many, how many armies I've taken out with my men on behalf of God? I deserve this. And he's trying to rationalize this thing away. How many other times do we try to rationalize the lie away? And just, just try to, you know, kind of ignore it and, and push it away. Then I think he he begins to try to to blame it. Not only on Bathsheba, you know, she shouldn't have been up there taking that bath. She's beautiful. I mean, I glanced out my window, there she is naked. What do you expect me to do? It's her fault. God's fault. He gave me this desire, this this drive, this sexual drive inside of me, it's his fault. Why did he do it if he didn't want me to do it? I mean, and again, I can just kind of get inside of of David because I I know I've been in these kind of positions and spots before where I'm being very dishonest with my heart. And, 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 And sometimes we can even fool ourselves. Then again, David tries to kill Uriah, her husband, all these kind of things. He tries to cover it up. He tries to hide. How oftentimes do we try to hide? Hide our sin. Hide hide where we've been and what we've done. How much guilt, how much shame is piled on us? Can I tell you something? Guilt and shame come from the enemy. (laughs) 
and, and, and this is where some of us are today. Instead of having an honest conversation with God about who He is and where we are, we're trying to ignore it. We're trying to blame it. We're, we're trying to hide it. And, you know, some of us are even just trying to manage it. That's what David did, right? He tried to manage his screw-up. A man who knew God. A man who was... Once a shepherd boy that God anointed and called him to be a great leader and a king and put him in that powerful position. A man who needed to understand the grace and mercy of God, not only the power and love of God. A man who needed to grab hold of having an honest conversation with God about who he is and what he's done. So in God's wisdom, the Bible says he sent a dear friend to David, a man named Nathan, to tell David a story that got David's attention where David realized that he had been being very dishonest about who he was and about who God was. And the Bible says, Nathan tells him this story. David, this is in 2 Samuel 12, David comes to his senses. And then, you know what, David comes to God and begins to cry out with an honest conversation. The conversation is Psalm 51. It's it's David getting real with God. And the reason I tell you that is because some of us need to get real with God today. We need to have that honest conversation. So I like to think of it like this. How many of you like to have an honest conversation? Yeah, we do. A lot of us like to have conversations, but we never get to the honest part of the conversation so we can move forward and progress. And and again, people like to converse. People like to joke around. People like to have fun. Nothing wrong with that. Watch the ball game together. It's incredible. It's fun. It's awesome. But when do you have an honest conversation, even with a group of friends, to talk about how to move forward in life, how to progress? And sometimes we won't have that conversation with a friend, much less will we have it with God. See, these religious leaders of the law, these people who came to Jesus They ask him some questions. Jesus asked them a question. Jesus said, I'm not going to answer your question until you're willing to get honest with me because you need to understand. Until I can really help you, you got to get honest with me about who I am and who you are. And my friends, that's one of the greatest things you can ever hear. Let me give you one of the great points of counseling anyone, even from a human perspective. It's great to sit and listen to all the problems. It's great for them to tell you everything that's wrong and how how they're going to get it right. But until you get them to the bottom and to the root of being honest about what has caused all of these things, mishaps and challenges in life, guess what? There's no way it's ever going to get fixed. And if they're unwilling to listen to what God says and wisdom that comes from him, then there's nothing humanly you can do. You know, sometimes I've been pastoring for a while now and I'll get in conversation with people, they talk about nothing. And I'm fine with you talking about nothing, but let's make some progress. Let's go somewhere. Let's don't just talk in circles. Let's don't keep repeating the same thing over and over again. And, 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 and again, if you sit down with me, listen, I'm not a fixer, okay? 
I, I really am. I, I'm really not. But, but I can get honest with you and say, Here, here's what God's word says. Let me give you a word of wisdom. I, I'm very compassionate. And, and again, I, I, I want to hear you. But I have discernment that comes from God. And if all you do is talk, 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 and all you're doing is talking in circles, then I'm quickly like Jesus. I'm like, when you get ready to hear a word of wisdom that comes from God, I'll answer you. See, this is where a lot of people miss it. They go to other people and they want somebody to fix their problem, but, but they don't ever even get honest about it. And this is the way I see God. This is the way I see my heavenly father because I believe this is the picture that the Bible paints. Is I have to come to God. And I look at it as I sit down in the great counselor's room with my heavenly father by faith. And I look him in the eye. And I share with him everything that's wrong in my heart. And I ask him for forgiveness, and I believe that he's taken me on a journey. I believe he is compassionate and he forgives. But as I have this conversation, sometimes I do it out loud. I do it in my car, in my vehicle, by myself. Some people call it prayer, but that's what prayer is. It's just having an honest conversation with your heavenly father. And it's saying, God, you know, I don't understand this. I stepped out of line. I wonder how many of us think we can hide what we did from God. <laughs> what we're thinking from God. How ridiculous is that? And again, these guys are being ridiculous when they come to Jesus. Jesus knew exactly what they were thinking. And the reason Jesus wouldn't answer their question is simply because they weren't willing to get honest. So again, I look at it as, God, I'm just going to get honest with you. I don't have to tell everybody else what's going on. But you know what? I got a good heavenly father and I can sit before him and I can say, I'm a screw up. I messed up. And until I'm willing to sit down, it's hard for me to progress. You want me to tell you why? Because I'll sit here and I'll wallow around in what I did. I'll keep revisiting, you know what, all of these things in, in, that, that are behind me. And there's consequences for my sin. I totally understand that. But I also totally understand that when I'm willing to sit down and I, I stop trying to ignore it, I start to stop trying to hide it, I stop trying to cover it up, and I get before my Heavenly Father, and by the way, yes, I am a believer in Jesus Christ, but I still need to come back to my Heavenly Father and have these conversations. And I do fully believe that God created me for purpose, and I have the conversation, then I get back up, and I wash my face, and I expect good things, and I move forward with what God has called me to do. Come on, somebody. It's honesty, man. Trust your heavenly father. Talk to him about where you are. Talk to him about who he is. Psalm 51 is a great passage for us to learn how to talk to God. And this is what David says to God. After all of his failures, he comes before God. Nathan brings the problem before his face. And the Bible says this in Psalm 51, verses 1 through 4. He comes to God and says, have mercy on me, O God. Why? Because of your unfailing love. Because of your great compassion. Blot out the stains of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin, for I recognize my rebellion. I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone I have sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. 
You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. In other words, you know what? We have to admit reality. That's what David does, right? I screwed up, basically, is what he says. I've rebelled, and I come before you, and I admit it. And because I admit it to you, I know who you are. You're a loving, compassionate, kind God who wants what's best for me. It doesn't mean I'm not going to get a spanking, but I'm about to release all this guilt, all this shame, all this crap that I'm carrying around, all this baggage, because I'm about to have an honest conversation with you, God. That's what David does. It's amazing, isn't it? How we don't want to get real with God sometimes. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to get real. Tell them. Go ahead. You don't, you don't, you don't have to get real with me all the time, but get real with God. It's the step to progress. I mean, think about why we don't want to do that. Some of us are so afraid that God's going to strike us down. David understood that God was loving, compassion, and kindness, but he stepped away from it, but he comes back to that love, compassion, and kindness of God and that mercy of God. He says, God, I need you to forgive me. I need to get back up. I need to move forward. This thing has stunted my progress and my purpose. What I've done has screwed up my progress and my purpose. And some of us are not living out our purpose right now, this very week, because of our past. And we're so focused on all of that. And God says, just have an honest conversation with me. Why don't we want to have an honest conversation with God? I, I mean, think about it. When you were a kid, you didn't want to have an honest conversation with your parents sometimes, did you? I remember my dad would say, hey, you've done something. Did you do it? I'm six years old. This is, how, this is my countenance. No. Like my dad didn't know. I think he had cameras in the back of his head. But here's the deal. He knew exactly where I was. My dad didn't come to me and say, did you do it? Because he was mad at me. He already knew I did it. He wanted me to admit where I was so that he could help me make progress. See, what a lot of us don't understand is when you bring your sin before your heavenly father, he wants you to understand who you are, who you're created to be, and live out your purpose each and every day. And lots of times he'll bring you into his counseling room and you're talking in circles. And he just simply probes you with one question. Did you do it? I invite you to look your father in the eye because he's a good, good father. And say, yes, I did. But I know this isn't who I'm created to be. And I'm ready to shed the guilt, shed the shame, just like David did. I realize there's consequences, but I'm moving forward. See, see, the Bible says David cries out. He admits where he is. And then the Bible says this in that cry. Psalm 51, verses 5 through 12. David goes on and says, I was, I was born a sinner. Yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. Listen to this. But you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. See, when we're willing to get real and get honest and stop living behind, you know, fake social media posts and Facebook and all this kind of stuff and really get honest with our creator. I mean, even from the womb, the Bible says, you know, right here that, that you can be taught wisdom. And the only way to ever get wisdom that comes from God, incredible wisdom. Because wisdom from the world is different than wisdom from God. It's to get honest with God. David says, that's all you ever desired from the womb 
with me to be real and be honest. Not a plastic Christian, a real Christian. One who believes that Christ died for them. One that believes that the, the horrific thing that happened on a cross was a picture for them to understand with them hiding behind their sin what it's doing to their life. See, because you understand that's the cruelty of the cross, don't you? Is, is what happened to Jesus on that cross is a snapshot to show you but that when you hide in your sin and you're dishonest with God, how, how, how horrific it is. Let's just get honest with God. Let's be real. God, I've gone my own way. I need you to step in. I need, you to get, I need to get real with you and do some amazing things. And he says, I desire you to purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I'll be whiter, whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me now. Let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. Renew a loyal spirit. Within me. Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and make me willing to obey you. Wow. God, renew a loyal spirit, an honorable spirit, a spirit that gets honest, a, a spirit that stays connected. A spirit that believes in my purpose. A, a spirit that follows you all the days of my life. A spirit that says, I'm not who I used to be, but I am who you created me to be in Christ Jesus. May I move forward. God, renew that spirit in me. Give me a, a valorous spirit. Give me a spirit of honor, of integrity, of, of one that follows you, believes in you, believes that you think the best of people, believe that you for people, believe that people need to get real with you. Believe, God, give me that kind of spirit again. See, David understood that when he got honest with God, he could expect God to restore him. See, I want us to understand today, God will restore us. When we get real with him. And when he restores you. I want you to understand what really happens. Because it happened in David's life. As he cries out in Psalm 51. God, when you forgive me. When I get honest with you. When I have this honest conversation with you. And you restore me. He says, he says this in Psalm 51 verse 13. He says, then I will teach your ways to rebels, other people who, who live in rebellion, and they will return to you. That's an amazing statement. David says, when I'm willing to get honest with you and I see what you do in my life, then I'm willing for you to work through my life and what I'm going to do is I'm going to step up on the platform and I'm going to share my testimony. I'm going to stand up at work and I'm going to talk about, you know what? God is the one who came and rescued me. And the only way he rescued me is I was willing to get honest with him. I had stepped out of line, and but I understand God is for me. He is not against me. I understand what happened on that cross was a vision for what's happening to me. I just got a download of wisdom from God and I believe that God is who he says he is and I'm just going to get honest with him and admit that I missed the mark of his glorious standard and I'm willing to get back in his good graces and though there will be consequences to my sin I'm going to march forward with his spirit and I'm going to be loyal all the days of my life and help other people see the, the loyal spirit in you the loyalty to God, my friend, is called ministry. It's the work of the ministry. And we're all called to work his kingdom. We're all called to build his family. We're all called to work together, build one another up, you know, help one another. Can I tell you something? When someone falls down, let's get honest with them. Let's, again, be compassionate. Let's mourn with them. Let's do the things. But my friend, if you don't tell them they're missing the mark of God's glorious standard by the path they're going on, you are really missing what true love is all about. What real love is about. 
what real love is about. It's being compassionate on someone's soul, but not letting them stay in a state of hiding, ignoring, and living a life without God. And until you and I are willing to have honest conversations and not just wallow in those conversations, say, bro, I'm here to tell you that God's got more in store for you than where you are. Stop spinning around in circles. And you bow the knee right now and you pray to your heavenly father and you admit who he is and what you've done. Get honest with him. Get real. And the moment you do that, you can expect him to come into your life and restore your soul. And when he restores your soul, you get up and you become a part of his family, his kingdom. It's called the local church and you do something. See, that, that sounds a little bit crazy and harsh, but honestly, it's, it's what we're created to be and do. If you want to know more about that today, you can come to partnership class after the 11, 15 service. Because I'm talking about partnership a little bit today. What does it mean to be a partner? It means that we're about carrying this good news of who Jesus is around the world through our gifts, talents, and resources. And my friend, God is calling us to partnership. And again, not to just hide out, not to just hang out, not to just ignore things. Admit where you are. I'm telling you, I don't care who you are, how old you are, where you've been, what gender you are. I don't care any of that stuff. But what I do know is when you admit to God that you have sin, He will forgive you and come into your life and restore your soul and renew your purpose. Is that what you need in your life today? It is. It can start right now. Bow your heads. Say, God, today, you don't have to tell me. Talk to your heavenly father. God, today, I believe. I believe I have failed. I know I have missed. But God, I know that there's bigger things in store for me. And you have a divine purpose for my life and my spirit. Tell God to create a clean heart in you through the blood shed for you. That's what belief in Jesus is all about. It's about letting God cleanse you of guilt, of shame, of hatred, of bitterness, of envy, jealousy. See, Jesus came to take the penalty of your mess on the cross and forgive you, my friend. But he overcame the cross, he overcame the grave, he overcame death with his amazing power. And can I tell you, the same power that lifted him out of the grave is the same power that will restore you this very moment, this very day, if you'll just believe that Jesus did it for you. Say, God, I trust you. I believe Jesus died for me and rose for me. And tell God from this point forward that you want to have a loyal spirit, an honorable spirit, a valorous spirit, a spirit that's connected to him, a spirit that gets real every day and walks with him and works with him. And my friend, if you just begin that journey, like David, say, God, for the, all the days of my life, I will help rebels return to you. Till God, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We hope you were encouraged, motivated, and inspired today by the message. And again, man, we believe in you. We believe great things for you. It's because of many people's faithful giving that we're able to go out around the world. If you choose to invest in Barefoot Church, just go on over to barefootchurch.com. You can give there. But go out, live your purpose, and be inspired in a great, great way.